And that's the whole video. Thank you for watching. I'm back. So I hope you had a happy Halloween. I had a great Halloween. Halloween is um, a holiday that I get to devote a lot of time and attention to because um, it comes right after my birthday and I'm usually really excited and slightly manic after my birthday. Is this another Halloween video? Are you making two Halloween vids in a row? Is this like a epilogue to Halloween? Do you have that much time on your hands? And to that I say yes. I decided that I had not said enough about Halloween in my Halloweener video. Because I only got to talk about Betty Crocker and like a myriad of other things. But I wanted to talk about more because there's a lot of things that I personally got to do that I didn't get to talk about because they weren't really relevant. It was getting toasty. So I became a panini. I did a lot of things, but I was also limited in the amount of things that I could do. As you know, um, I live in an area that gets kind of cold. And guess what? I'm from Ohio. This Halloween slash like Halloween weekend slash week, two weeks beforehand, just like the encompassing of time right before Halloween in which you can do Halloween infested things. I don't know why I said infested. Halloween themed things that are available to do because it's the season, the time in which you can do that. It's been really cold and usually rainy and windy and just really gross. It's the type of weather that I know that I'm gonna get like pneumonia if I go out for too long, but I also really wanna go on a haunted hayride. So it's like, I have to weigh those options a lot. Dying from pneumonia in real life, pretending that I might die on a haunted hayride. So as I've said, I'm from Dayton, Ohio, and people from Dayton are very acclimated to what it is to be an Ohioan. Being from Ohio is like being a different breed of human. You have different breeds of dogs, and you have different breeds of people. Most breeds of dogs are bred that way because they're show dogs. For Ohioans, we're not. There's a very ethnographic nature to studying people from Ohio. Observing the behavior of someone from Ohio is like watching the entire lineage of a family-owned grocery store rise up from their seats at a wedding and corral to the dance floor in some type of like ritualistic procession. Like ravenous hungry farm animals as they hear the beginning dance beat to Cupid's shuffle. Being from Ohio is like being the human embodiment of a Kroger Rewards card. If you've ever poured Diet Coke into a wine glass and then sat outside and thought nothing of it, you're probably from Ohio. With that being said, um, us Ohioans have our own ways of deterring the weather and doing basically anything, no matter if it's just raining and snowing in the middle of October. I felt like this whole October I had to relive my life all over again. Um, like some type of patient with amnesia that I had to just like go over my steps of my life again to be like, oh yeah, that's, well, that's who I am. I'm that person. So with that being said, I revisited one of the most paramount places of my life. Well, not anymore, but it used to be owned by Paramount Studios. King's Island. From September through October, King's Island holds this thing called Halloween Haunt. Uh, where throughout the parks after like 6 p.m. they have people come in um, dressed up like zombies and scary things and they're supposed to scare you. I decided that I would go to this on the one day that I could request off from work and it rained so hard. I also got there really late because I did have to go to work still but I only had to go to one of my two jobs and I was thankful for that. That being said, I still got to spend a lot of time there, um, and I had a lot of fun, even though it was raining and very cold and very windy, and half the rides were closed. I went with my dad. I wanted to revisit the Hanna-Barbera land a lot, and I wanted to see all the rides there, um, but 
I couldn't. Because Hanna-Barbera Land doesn't exist anymore. Because time is a thief. And it steals all good things. It's Snoopy Land now, which arguably is still good. It's not bad. I enjoyed it still. I just can't fit on everything. I could fit on a few rides. And I do have pictures of me on Boo Blasters on Boo Hill. Which was a great ride. Even if I knew what it originally had looked like. And how they repurposed it. Which looked just a little bit cheesy. You could still see where it was Scooby-Doo. Which was kind of jarring. But it was still fun. And I beat my dad. I scored 35 points. He scored 0. Because he didn't want to touch the blaster. Because he thought it had germs on it. Which it probably did. We then rode a bunch of roller coasters. And um, I think I got a concussion on a few of them. But I had a fun time, and it rained a lot, and, of course, I got my blue ice cream. And it was great. Apparently on the sign they don't like to depict that you can do the blue and vanilla swirl, even though the machines have a blue, blue vanilla swirl, and vanilla option. They only market the blue option. And I looked at the girl and I said, can I get the blue and vanilla swirl? This was like speaking my native tongue. And I had no idea if anyone else understood what I was saying. She looked at me and she said, Yeah, of course. And I felt so relieved. Anyways, I got the blue and vanilla as I always did. And it was just as good. I got it in a bowl because I was really afraid of spilling it because I always did that. My dad was fearless, and he got it just on the cone with no bowl. He didn't spill it. He's more dexterous than I am, so. The good thing about it raining and the weather being terrible is that there was barely anyone there. So I literally could go onto every single roller coaster, and I only had to wait for one round before I could get on. Every other time I had been at Kings Island, it was at least an hour, two hour wait. I was not going to wait that long to go on a roller coaster that didn't even last that long. There was a lot of fun like Halloween decorations throughout the park, which is something that I really, really appreciated. When you first walk in, you're greeted by the Eiffel Tower, which has these huge red Dr. TJ Ackelberg eyes just staring down at you like, why are you spending money on capitalism? You don't need to be here. Even though the Eiffel Tower wasn't actually operational at this time because of the weather, I actually thought that was a good thing because going up to the top and seeing everything from there kind of would lose the appeal. I liked being looked down upon by a god, by some type of mythological figure, some type of Lovecraftian beast that was just staring down at me, just motionless at any moment, having the ability to just crawl and stomp on me, doing whatever it wanted to do. I loved being that way. When you first enter, there's this big like lake area but um they had to flood that out anyways surrounding that empty lake was a bunch of skeleton decorations which were really cute and i got some pictures with those too part of king's island has this like 1950s happy days section to it um that part is interesting it was at this moment whilst I had just finished lunching on a lukewarm vegan burrito that I realized that this retro subsection of King's Island called Coney Mall was in fact, not that interesting, and the segment in which I had planned on discussing the plethora of discourse that of which I had experienced in this said section of the park was ultimately uneventful and mundane at best. In a sequence in which my entire life flashed before my eyes, I found myself suddenly deadlocked into discussing this perfectly bland part of the park in order to cohesively segue into the better half of my narrative. If you look closely, like out of some David Attenborough nature documentary, you may be able to precisely pinpoint the millisecond in which my eyes glaze over like a Thanksgiving carrot side dish. Your great aunt insists that this was a family recipe but I mean, did the family really invent brown sugar? It doesn't take a team of scientists to sprinkle salt on a root vegetable. What do you even call a group like that? A culinary scientist? A foodologist? 
bartenders that insist on calling themselves a mixologist like they endured several years of formalized schooling to make a gin and tonic, as though the ingredients weren't literally already in the name. Gosh, now I can't stop thinking about food scientists like, injecting gravy into a piece of Wonder Bread and then recording the results on a clipboard. Anyways, while I think Coney Mall is a nice place to walk around for ambience, I knew at this point in the recording that the long length of time I had planned to invest in describing my experience in Coney Mall would bore the socks off of anyone watching, even if they weren't wearing any socks. Please put on a pair of socks so this analogy makes sense. With that being said, Coney Mall is nice and my vague descriptions do not give it enough credit. Onwards with the video. There's like a diner restaurant there, uh, and there's a few other places. They have standard like amusement rides like a scrambler um, it's nothing too special but they did have this one spot where it had five different coke machines and that was it the whole building was devoted to just these five coke machines but each machine had like a thousand different coke options that you could do you could try like every single flavor that coke distributed at all from all of their subsidiary brands my dad went with a mellow yellow cherry which i later looked up and it was a flavor that was discontinued and then finally brought back in 2015 but you can only get it at these special machines these machines are called coca-cola freestyle machines and Damn that hype. I had never tasted this flavor before, so I was um, I was pretty into it. The one <laughs> worker that worked in this building <laughs> just stood there. So you, you stand in this line, and there's just this gate, and <laughs> there's the employee with all these cups, and he just stands there and he says, what size do you want? And you just say, uh, I'll get a large. He hands you a large cup, you pay for the large size, and then you enter the gate, and then you can just go to one of the five machines. Every pop flavor is the same cost, so it doesn't matter, you just have whatever option you want. I think you could even theoretically get different flavors in the same cup, I don't think it mattered that much. So his job is literally just this gatekeeper to just the expansion of all these limitless flavors. Now I do remember asking the employee if they had straws. Because I knew I'd be sharing this soda with my dad, and I was dealing with a bout of uh, meningococcal meningitis, and I was already in septic shock, so I didn't really want my dad to have to deal with that. And the employee was like, uh, no, we don't have straws. No one has straws in this entire amusement park. We would never use straws. And I just kind of looked him in the eye, and I just was like, really? I get that that's this good step forward in terms of, like, anti-pollution, and I'm all about that. Like, I have, like, a painting of Greta Thunberg on my ceiling that just naturally grew out of vines and shrubbery. But in terms of a theme park and how much that they waste through other things, like making plastic keychains and souvenir bracelets and just overall merchandise in general, I feel like straws and the convenience of straws while a good step forward making that step and then just going like and then calling it a day it, that's not going to get you over the finish line in other related news uh we left um a little bit early uh because it was getting really rainy and by then we actually got <laughs> we actually had rode all the rides that had been open <laughs> granted every ride wasn't oh this is my late by the way um but granted it <laughs> And open so um, our options were a little limited but um, we also didn't have to wait in line for any of the rides that we did go on so that was really fun and I also got to ride the uh, swings do you know what the swings are <laughs> so and um, this is my other leg so in Kings Island they have the swings which is like a, a merry-go-round, but it swings, and the swings go really high, and it, it's just a really memorable and um, fun experience. So that finished the first part of my Halloween experience, um, which was revisiting old memories at a place that I really enjoyed. 
of course, you know, your homeboy had to do it to him. I bought this. Um, as you can see, it's just the... <laughs> it's just the head. <laughs> they didn't have the inflatable body. <laughs> so I think this makes it even more worth it. And if, and if I ever want to be a southern belle, I can just wear this as a nice sun hat. I also made one hell of an investment, and I think you're really gonna like it. I went to an antique store. I go to a lot of antique stores. I buy a lot of antique things. Are you ready? Do you hear them crinkle? As you know, I really like cereal. So I got the whole gang. I got them all. We got Frankenberry, the Chalkmeister. Look at him. He's even got really nice shoes. Takes care of them. That's what a good man does. My favorite, Booberry. I don't know what it is about Booberry's demeanor, but I mean, that face. But hells yeah, I got all three. They're my gang. And I hung them by my door next to my Garfield mural that's, that says never accept a candy gram, which I think actually is pretty appropriate for Halloween too. And to close out my Halloween celebration, I went to see a screening of the original Halloween movie. Do you like how the, my room just lit up after I said that? The angels see, and they love me. I went to see the original Halloween with my dad. I went to this movie theater back in like the early 2000s, the early aughts. Don't you hate when people just say the aughts? I don't know what that means. In the early 2000s, I went and saw um, the Jimmy Neutron movie um, at this theater and looking back at from then to now um, I can definitely say that it's definitely the same seats and they have not been refurbished whatsoever I think perhaps uh, this movie theater has some type of weird Benjamin Button time lapse where it it, it it's transfixed at becoming so retro and so old so quickly it has to be some like dimensional crossing at this old movie theater that only plays like second and third showings <laughs> but at this movie theater at this time they were playing uh, Halloween on Halloween day um, so we decided to go to a later showing because uh, I did have school that day uh, when we went there we got in and we thought oh damn we're a little bit late we're gonna miss the beginning sequence, which is the best sequence. Is when Michael Myers stands out in the yard with a Pagliacci costume <laughs> and a knife and just stares out onto the road. And his dad is like, Michael? This movie actually makes me laugh. This movie makes me laugh. And it shouldn't because it's a horror movie, <laughs> but it makes me laugh. It's just really ridiculous. Because his dad can see that there's, like, blood on the knife. But his kid's in, like, a Halloween costume. <laughs> like a clown costume. In the 60s. And he's just like, Michael? <laughs> As though, like, he's calling his kid. Because he thinks that he's, like, in the bathroom at 4am getting water out of the sink. Michael? There's blood on the knife. Shouldn't you be more, like, emotionally startled by this? But no. Not this dad. I don't really like the side characters in this movie that much. I do like the beginning part when they're walking home and um, Jamie Lee Curtis is like, oh, I forgot my chemistry book. And like the other girls are like, I never bring my chemistry book home. <laughs> Fuck school. There's something so comedic about the way that Michael Myers can't die. Like you can stab him multiple times and he'll just lay on the ground and you're like, well, he's done. And then just in the background, 
when everything's resolved and settled, he'll just go. He's just doing a setup for the presidential fitness test in PE or something. I don't take Michael Myers seriously as a character, and neither should you. And I think that's the real sentiment of this Halloween. Halloween 2019, don't believe in mass murderers. They don't exist. The real monsters are here on Earth. And their name is Kids Bob Enthusiasts. I'm drinking kombucha. That's what it sounds like when I joke. <laughs>